Hi guys, let's now explore and understand this absolute beauty of the nature which is a rainbow. We have done reflection, we have done refraction, we have done dispersion and no wonder all these phenomena, they work together, they collude to give us something which is as beautiful as a rainbow. I'm pretty sure everybody would have seen one and it would have brought a smile to your face. Knowing the reason why it gets formed is going to bring a smile to your face again. Now to explain it to a 10th grader or the way a 10th grader is going to answer for your exam sake, I'll, I'll, I'll put the explanation in two parts. My part one would cover the main phenomena which is what what all is required what are the basic ingredients such that a rainbow is getting formed and uh, knowing that would be good enough for your exams in school but if somebody has to dive deep into it which i would encourage the kids to think more that reasoning is not going to explain everything what we observe in a rainbow like right now you can see this beautiful rainbow in front of you and what you observe is the inside of the lower rainbow which is the primary rainbow is quite lit up and then there's a dark band which is Alexander's dark band in fact after the philosopher Alexander who was there in 280 who had described this dark band this dark band you see the dark band and another rainbow which is a secondary rainbow and then it lightens up a bit again. A true explanation of the formation of rainbow would automatically cover all this why it is happening. If, if we don't get to know why it is bright in the core, why it is dark above the red bands, above the red color, then maybe we have not gone to the details. So going to the details would be part two by the way and that would be a better explanation or a more full a complete a fuller explanation of how a rainbow is formed but let us just get started with the basics and that is what i'm going to cover in this part one so the basic requirement to see a rainbow would be sun behind your back so if that's your sun if that's the sun then you are say here that's your face and you are observing that side, you are observing this is your front side. So what is there in the front? What is there in the front? Yeah, you know it. There are water droplets from the rain or a mist or what you can create in your house or lawn. So there are water droplets and you are looking at those water droplets and what you see is you see the beautiful rainbow. So red light is reaching you, violet light is reaching you and you see a beautiful rainbow. So that is your requirement that you are not looking at the sun, the sun is behind you, you are looking at the droplets. So what must be happening? It is pretty evident from here that the light rays from the sun which goes in all direction is going towards the rain and something is happening over here and when it comes back it doesn't come back as white light you don't see this mist as white but you are seeing a beautiful bow over here a, a certain bow over here is what you are seeing a colored bow which is your rainbow and in the same frame, I would just like to show you that since I'm calling it a bow, it is a circular formation. So if that's your position of the face, that's the position of the sun, you will see the rainbow somewhat like this, wherein we'll do some calculations in part two and show you that this angle at which you are looking up for the red light, that would be higher it would be around 42 degrees and when you're looking at the violet light it would be slightly lower somewhere around 40 degrees so we'll go into the details of this 
so i hope you have understood the basic requirement you are not facing you are not looking at the sun you are looking on the other side sun is behind your back rain drops or mist is in front of you and looking you are looking at them and the sun rays are somehow reflecting and coming to you coming into your eyes not as a white light but in those different colors so i've retained my sun and our sun and i'm going to make a ray which is going to fall on this this is my super big water drop i've just zoom in to one of the droplets of rain so say this is your droplet of water so let me make a ray from the sun to the water droplet and suppose suppose this is the ray now it is striking the water drop now what do you think is going to happen at this interface air to water it is going from air to water so we know that the refractive index of the constituent colors are different your red is going to bend less compared to how much would violet bend or how much would blue bend so i'll just draw a red ray which shouldn't go straight forward why because it has entered from a rarer medium to a denser medium it is going to bend towards the normal i just skip drawing the normal i'll rather draw it so it bend towards the normal what would be a normal by the way what would be a normal if it is a circular or a spherical water drop from the center if i join the point of incidence then that radial line is going to be normal because this is circular right so your angle of incidence if you would like to mark it is this and this angle is your angle of refraction for the red light i'm not going to mark it because there are a bunch of rays going to come and this might look little messy but i'll complete the destiny of this red ray so if it strikes on the other side again something is going to happen and here i would like you to pay great deal of attention because there are places a lot of videos where it is absolutely wrongly said that a total internal reflection is going to happen not at all totally not totally not that's a mathematical certainty that a total internal reflection is not going to happen simply because of our snell's law say this was i and there is a refraction and this angle this angle over here is r so what we have from snell's law is whatever is the refractive index of the red light for water with respect to air whatever it is it is by the way 1.325 roughly or 1.33 depending on which wavelength you are talking about all this red ray red range will have various wavelength wavelengths so say the value is 1.325 for red that p is going to be sin i by sin r the angle in air divided by the angle in water now what is going to happen at this end what is going to happen at this end is the the big question so let's just complete do some geometry over here this is your angle of refraction this angle would be ditto same why because this this triangle is an isosceles triangle you have a radius over here and that's also the radius so these angle have to be same now if they are same angles then what is going to happen your ray is going to go from a denser medium to a rarer medium if it does that it doesn't go straight it bends away from the normal right how much away will it go 90 degree obviously not if it is going at 90 degree then it is like very few going at 90 degree most of them suffering a total internal reflection but do you think it is going to go at 90 degree degree if uh, whatever part refracts no it is not going to go at 90 degree or beyond it is going to go at a much lesser angle more than r for sure but it is going to go somewhat like this wherein 
as a mathematical certainty i can say that this angle is i for sure again the same i the same i which was here why would i say that why would i say that because again over here we have the same snell's law acting it is applicable mu of air with respect to say water which will be 1 by mu of water red light with respect to air is equal i am not going into the details of this because this you have done earlier will be equal to sin of the incident angle which was r over here divided by sin of the angle where in the in the medium where it has gone that is in air the bigger angle over here which is if you don't believe it is i you can call it i dash for a while but when you check out this formula with this what you see is if you reverse and equate it your sin i dash is nothing but sin i mu r was sin i by sin r 1 by mu r is sin r same r same r as this one same r by sin some i some emergent angle you can call it a e for for a while but that angle of emergence is going to be ditto same as i so if a ray is emerging and we have proved at what angle it is emerging same as i then what were we talking about in the initial frame that the sun has to shine on the rain drops and the rain drops are going to do something your refraction reflection dispersion is all going to collude and it is going to throw back all the colors towards your eye and you'll see the rainbow so where is that happening it is just going away you are somewhere over here right we said we'll be somewhere over here right observing this phenomena so what are we missing now what we are missing is what generally a lot of places lot of people do miss is that whenever there is a refraction happening it doesn't rule out that there is no reflection happening is there reflection happening over here at this spot yes it is happening how much of it that is a good question so that's something which is uh, to be analyzed to be studied but we are not we don't have to do it for this part maybe in a later on part part 2 or maybe part 3 i'll just peek a bit on that also but the point over here is is reflection happening yes sir it is happening is refraction happening by all means it is happening so the point is reflection happens as well as refraction happens and same goes for this point if a certain intensity of ray is refracting out does it rule out that there would be some reflection also no it doesn't rule out at all and we will have reflection we will have a reflect a reflection which will follow the laws of reflection such that the angle of incidence would be equal to the angle of reflection and that's your reflected ray that's your reflected ray if this angle we had called it r then this is going to be exactly r again this was your r that's your r that's your r again and how much is this reflection that i said we'll be analyzing way later but what we need to know is there is reflection more slant is this ray more amount of reflection is happening by the way more head on or more, more less is the incident angle over here more is getting into the rain drop less is reflecting over here but had this i been more more have more would have reflected and less would have gone in so anyways when it is going from a rarer medium to a denser medium a good amount gets into it when it is going from a denser medium to a rarer medium again both is going to happen reflection as well as refraction the amount which is going to get reflected would be a good amount if there is if there is greater angle of incident which is marked r over here anyways let us just study what is the fate of this 
ray now so it is being incident at this point that's the interface between water and air again so let us just draw our normal to get the things to understand the things better so that's our normal over here this triangle and this triangle both would be congruent the triangle itself is an isosceles triangle for the same reason as the previous one and hence this angle would again be equal to r and if it is equal to r then whatever i explained at this end that the ray goes out at i here also the ray will is going to go out it is going to go from the denser medium to a rarer medium so if it does that if it goes from a denser medium which is water to a rarer medium it doesn't go straight it bends out a bit right so it will bend out a bit to bend outwards such that this angle by the way is ditto same as i same reason as i told this i this i and that i is all same it is all same which is key to my part 2 by the way and what about the reflection over here yes a reflection is also happening so mind you it is the same red light which is coming from the sun and i am doing various reflections and refractions so you would know that the intensity is reducing with each reflection and refraction say it's 100 unit which is coming and say 80 goes in 20 reflects out of this 80 say 40 reflects and 40 goes out then out of this 40 again 20 goes out and 20 reflects so very less is reflecting right very very less is reflecting back but nevertheless it is reflecting back so i'm just going to draw that and further i'm not going to indulge in this further what happens to this i'm not going to comment on that right now so we are more concerned about this ray which is going to go into the human the eye which is somewhere over here so that's about the red light this right light which got reflected again uh, reflected inside again is going to do the same thing as the rays were doing it it will refract out which is not going to go into my eye this not this one and it will reflect and what happens to that is of no concern because that becomes really really of low intensity so just uh, to make the things again very clear a white light came struck water the white light is made up of all wavelengths one of the wavelength is red which is the extreme end one of the extreme end of human's vision so we are just talking about red first so red enters water if it is entering water it is going to slow down according to its refractive index so red has got a refractive index of around 1.3 3 to 5 according to that it is going to bend towards the normal so it has bent slightly towards the normal it has not gone straight straight would have been like this it has not gone straight it has bent down now it when it strikes the other end it can do two things it can reflect as well as refract so it has done both the things some of it has refracted out which is not of our concern maybe a lot has refracted out at this particular angle shown but still not of our concern and some of it has reflected that reflected ray again will do two things one is refracting out and then reflecting so the one which is reflecting now is not of our concern because it is never going to go into our eye it might be of a concern of somebody flying up there here somewhere and the ray which refracts out goes into our eye and just for some calculation sake in our part 2 I have just marked, the, marked the angles I hope this is clear to you so I hope you would be able to tell very easily what happens to the violet ray also which is among one of the rays which is coming from the sun white light so 
at this place the violet ray is also going to refract it is going to refract more than the red so say it refracts so much and just clear some stuff which you may not require so that it is not too much cluttered so continuing with my violet ray it is going to go out as well as reflect if you want i'll just draw a normal from here to the violet ray the point of incidence of the violet ray so that's my normal too long a normal right and yes again the violet ray is going to go out and will go will bend away from the normal and the angle formed would be exactly i over here but i don't have to concern myself with that i'm more concerned with the ray which got reflected so it will reflect at the same angle as it was incident comes over here mind you it is following the laws of reflection over here whatever angle this is this one is the same angle these two are the same angle now here again it is going to strike the interface of water and air and if i draw my normal here again then what we'll see is that the violet light is going to come out not straight but bending away from the normal so if it is bending away from the normal the angle made would be ditto same as i because of reasons already told to you so this will again be i and what we can see over here is the violet light coming out and the red light coming out further we can say that this violet light reflects also but i am not concerning myself too much with that it goes and strikes at that end so what happens next you can do for your own joy you can do it later i am more concerned with the ray which has come out the ray which has come out i'll just try to clear up the diagram a bit and keep all the relevant rays as much as possible other other things i'll try to lighten it up and summarize what has happened till now so that we are on the same page so that we can further figure out why are we seeing the rainbow as we are seeing it yes just to summarize the journey of the violet ray the violet ray was among the all the other rays in this white ray it came over here some reflected some refracted the refracted ray went in struck the other side had a reflection at this side so we'll call it as internal reflection because it is happening inside but it is not total internal reflection because some went out but i am not bothered about that what i am bothered about is this why am i bothered about this because i am bothered about the formation of rainbow and this this ray which has which was internally reflected comes and hits the interface again of water and air again it gets internally reflected which i am not so bothered about and it gets refracted out which goes into the eye which i same human not humanly possible not the same human at all this is some other guy say mr a and this is some other guy mr b a is seeing this ray which is coming from the same droplet and b seeing that ray so why is why are we seeing a rainbow why is this guy b seeing a rainbow why is a seeing a rain rainbow can anybody say that why a is seeing a rainbow why why b is seeing a rainbow because in this diagram what i see is only one ray is going there is a difference if you do some calculations later on what we see is there is a difference of around 2 degrees and the rain drop is so far so far so far that even if there is a 2 degree difference between two rays coming to you so i'll just rather draw one as violet and one as red 
even if it is two degree difference even if it is two degree difference it is going to space out this thing is going to space out so much that ultimately it will be a big difference it won't go to the same human for sure this this gap will become too large so why do we see a rainbow why a single human is seeing all the colors so i hope you got that answer for sure the various lights from a single drop is not going to go into a single human but then there are so many drops there are so many drops up there down there everywhere it's raining after all and all those drops are receiving the rays from the sun which is very much parallel so i can consider the same same ray like this going to those drops all of them here i'm just i'm just not revealing one part because i have to tell that part in part 2 but let us just keep the thing simple i hope while you were answering the question something clicked to you the ones who have got it right something else some other question came to your mind and that question unfortunately those kids i'm not answering you i'm just keeping things simple so say this is person c there is some girl over here madam c now this madam c is receiving light from so many drops all the drops are giving out your violet light red light green light at different angles so she would receive the violet light at that uh, 40ish angle and she will receive the red light at that 42ish angle don't mind my angles over here that is i'm just being consistent with my rays what i have drawn earlier so that that red light is going to come from some other drop this violet light is going to come from some other drop there would be a green light which would be coming to her from some other drop and we can use similar logic and similar calculation to get that angle also which would lie between uh 40 and 42 40.5 and 42.5 so that's a green one you'll have yellow you'll have all colors you'll have all colors coming at various angles so she just have to look up in the right direction at the right angle to see a rainbow yeah this is looking good mind you there's a error here also in what i'm showing but i hope this is i've i've tried to be as true to the facts as possible whatever i can be in part 1 so i'll just summarize it up sun has to be behind you you have to look in front sun sun is shining on the rain drops the rain drops are doing this magic what is the magic the rain drops are doing first magic is happening over here note it down if you wish to first magic is happening over here at this interface what is it doing it is refracting as well as dispersing dispersion is happening dispersion of white light why 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 the white light will get dispersed because the constituent colors are having different refractive index they are having different speed in water so it gets dispersed so red bends less and while it bends more so you have dispersion with refraction there has been reflection also but that doesn't explain the rainbow what we are seeing so we'll just omit that we, i mean we'll we are just not going to talk about it we are not going to discuss that with respect to the rainbow what we are seeing the primary rainbow what i want to show then what happens then comes the other interface the light going from water to air there what happens reflection happens you may call it as internal reflection plus but please do not call it as total internal reflection i have proved it to you right you have tens of people telling you that it is total internal reflection that's crap it is not as soon as they see that it is going from a denser medium to a rarer medium there is some reflection they think that it is total internal reflection no reflection always happens and it is just another reflection so reflection happens we are not concerned about the one which is refracting out 
even though I can ask you to figure out what kind of rainbow or halo in fact you would see around this source of light if you can look into that source of light sun is sun is too bright to look into if you are here if your eye is here here you see that the violet light is having a deeper angle the red light is having a shallower angle you have a reverse rainbow you can google that out and uh, i'm so sorry i went into that line i didn't have to that is not even in part two that is maybe in part three we'll discuss so there's an internal reflection happening and the rays get reflected then comes then they strike the other interface the red and the violet they are stri striking the interface of water and air again at this point what happens at this point you have refraction happening so one part of your answer will consider what are the phenomena what are the phenomenon happening at each place so you have dispersion with refraction number one then comes internal reflection number two then comes refraction again number three and the light rays are going into the human eyes various eyes not the same eye right now why is the violet lower in the rainbow why is the red higher in the rainbow simple answer is because to see the red one to see the red light or to see the red part of the rainbow you have to look higher because it is coming at a greater angle of depression it is it is coming at a steeper angle and the violet light is coming at a shallower angle in 10th grade you don't have to use words like angle of depression and all it simply means that you have you don't have to elevate your vision so much your angle of elevation wouldn't be so high to watch the violet light as much as to white watch the red light we are talking about just two degrees of difference by the way so and red light comes at a higher or at a steeper angle red light So I hope that will explain why is violet lower, why is red upper. There are some, some confusion in the head of some students that violet is up here, red is down here. So why is violet down? Violet is down because you are looking down. There are so many rays, If I there are so many bubbles. If I draw the next water droplet then I can say the red is up there, right? Red is up there. So it is not about just one droplet and seeing that from that droplet, which was up, which was down. So I guess that uh, pretty much uh, summarizes your rainbow part one. That is what you have to write in your uh, 10th grade exams. The phenomena are dispersion and ref refraction at the first interface, then internal reflection at the second interface and then refraction again and it enters your eye at different angles different eyes at different angles the steeper angle is by red hence it is higher the shallower angle is by violet and hence it is lower the shallow and deep part again is not very well inquired but you should be knowing it very well you don't you shouldn't write wrong answers over here you should know what are the facts if you have any doubts you can always put it in the doubt and we'll be more than happy to answer. Thank you. And I hope you are curious enough now to watch the part two to, to, to get the full picture, at least 90% of the picture. Part two will also not cover 100% of the picture. But just to push you to watch the other part, I would uh, say that I've never explained why the inside of a rainbow is bright and the outside is dark the alexander's dark band i have not explained i have also not explained by the way that why rainbow is a full circle it is fully round and in fact if you are looking from up above you are looking down you are supposed you are flying in an aeroplane you can really find it is not a very 
rare occurrence it is you would find if you are looking uh, looking for it full circle rainbows you will find full circle rainbows You just need to be up there, somewhere here, say flying or say standing on a hill. If the sun is down, it is even better for you. If the sun is down here, you'll get your rainbow over here, full circles. To have the sun down, you have to be really high up there, right? So, I'll, I'll leave you with a real picture of full circle by the way. That should really push you to get to the other part and we'll get the angle, radius, everything. So that's your full circle. Let me just remove my sun because the sun is behind, behind your face by the way if you are looking at it. Right behind your face and this is the rainbow. You see the secondary one also, you see the dark band also yet to be explained right a small hint would be the colors what you see as dispersion spectrum as dispersion from a prism those aren't the colors of a rainbow maybe the red would be the closest to the actual red what you will see from the in the spectrum uh, from a prism but the rainbow color is not the prism spectrum color Tata, bye bye. I hope you have tons of questions still on rainbow. You are not satisfied is what I hope. And to quench your thirst, come on to part two. Bye bye.